I think we can start, yeah. So the plan for today is to go through the existing jury to open control test bed engineering and operation stuff. Christos will do that for us. And in the afternoon we can get back to the uh, and yeah. finish, finish the OCF uh, well, yeah, tutorial I mean, part. So, part of yeah. the OCF and the afternoon we will be very short because we are right. finishing. Yeah. And then we will go a bit on, on this code, the code, the, the software architecture and stuff. Okay. Yeah, I think <laughs> this, this is where we should focus on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think it is where we should focus the focus on, I guess. <laughs> well, that's, the, uh, that's the thing that SA, SA uh, free, sorry, SA 2003 has to do. <laughs> take, over, take over the operation from JRA2, so uh, please pay attention. <laughs> uh, we have three hours to complete this session. When is, when is lunch? I don't know. What, what, what time is lunch? I think around it's one, one o'clock? Around yes, yeah, one o'clock. We will confirm it. All right. One so, uh, yes. It's one o'clock, and then from two to four, it's the noon session. Okay. All right. So you have enough time, I guess. We can okay. we can break for coffee or something. Okay. Yeah. So let's so just go ahead, and then we'll see. Yeah. So this emoticon is for uh, PSNC guys. I hope uh, you enjoyed your travel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, I, uh, we will start uh, with an overview. Uh, then I will explain you a few things for the facility, facility element, the architecture. We will um, take a closer look to POPs and the configuration there. Um, I would like to say a few words for firewalling. is uh, operated by Dante, so I should explain you how you what uh, rules are uh, installed right now and uh, what you should do in case you want to to change this firewalling. Um, we'll show you, I will show you the management interfaces from uh, operator's perspective and from um, user perspective. Uh, then we'll explain some things for data plane and control plane. Um, we can see the um, the basic uh, the concept of open v suite then um, some operations and details for the operational part uh, where you can find documentation for uh, our testbed and general speaking for open v suite and uh, other components we are using and uh, we can see some CLI commands running in order to get more familiar. So, um, we have uh, five pops, London, Frankfurt, Vienna, Amsterdam, and Zagreb. Uh, they are identical, but uh, we, have, uh, we have chosen a pop, Frankfurt pop, in order to run uh, uh, our um, infra infrastructure VMs, meaning one VM for OCF platform that Leonardo showed you yesterday and uh, one uh, VM for uh, Flowvisor. So we have two special uh, uh, purpose VMs installed in Frankfurt. This is the only difference between Frankfurt and the other pops. I mean, the, the whole configuration is identical right now. Uh, the same stands for the underlying infrastructure. Uh, I mean, Dante setup because um, three or four months ago, there was uh, a different configuration to Zagreb uh, pop, but they upgraded to MX uh, box. So right mm -hmm. now, uh, the configuration, the infrastructure configuration from that down the side is identical to, to these five pops. Um, the topology among these pops is full mesh. Uh, Actually, Dante is providing uh, to our uh, facility uh, a full mesh topology implemented by MPLS links. So um, we have uh, the ability to forward uh, Ethernet frames from one pop to another pop in our full mesh topology uh, on top uh, of uh, L2 VPN MPLS. Uh, implementation. 
We are using two nodes per pop. Uh, we have uh, deployed two general purpose servers. Uh, the details for these servers uh, are under Gen3 task 5 uh, um, week internal. Uh, I will provide you with the archive link because now it's uh, Gen3 uh, is uh, in archive mode. I moved, I moved some of the archive documents ah, to okay. the internet. So, so if you don't have access to the archive, you can find the same stuff on the current Gen3 Plus internet. Okay, there is a document uh, uh, from Dell that uh, um, include, includes uh, the full description of the hardware, if you want to see uh, what is the hardware. Yeah, point me to the document and then I'll... Okay, I'll, I'll no problem. Um, so we are using one general purpose server with two CPUs and 32 gigabyte, gigabyte of RAM. Uh, for uh, Zen hypervisor and one for the OpenV suite. So we have uh, two general purpose servers per pop. The, um, the difference between uh, OpenV suite server and uh, Zen, Zen server is that we have installed uh, four um, PCI Express cards to each OpenV suite server. And each uh, PCI card has uh, four gig uh, ports, so we have sixteen uh, ports plus four uh, which are integrated. We have a total number of twenty gig ports to open V Suite server in order to have the ability to uh, provision uh, sorry, not only to users that they are using they are using VMs but uh, to use they want to collocate their equipment in these pops. Uh, so we are not using uh, all the ports. There are some spare ports for uh, additional users. Uh, they require, uh, they want to collocate their, uh, their gear. Um, as Leonardo said, we are using a VLAN-based slicing mechanism. It, uh, this is not a, um, uh, our um, our approach is VLAN slicing. I mean that whenever we want, we can change this um, this approach without uh, uh, having to uh, to hack our software components. The only thing um, that can that should be changed is the uh, the approval approach of the administrator on top of OCF and nothing more. So. We, there is no configuration file that we should change or modify, nothing at all. But um, VLAN-based slicing is, uh, is, simple, uh, is quite simple for the operator and is also quite simple for the user. So that's why we are using VLAN slicing. Um, and um, of course, you already know that we are using OCF. Uh, for uh, management and control plane. Um, we consider uh, the flow visor as a, as a part of OCF because we are configuring through OCF the flow visor, the flow spaces on top of flow visor. So uh, this is the control plane part. And the management plane part is the part that you can configure and create, delete VMs, etc., etc. Uh, for now, we have uh, installed uh, OVS version 1.4.2. Um, we used the packaging system of Debian uh, operating system in order to be more, um, uh, let's say, uh, in order to be more easy to, to handle uh, the OpenV suite. Um, and of course, uh, we suppose that uh, it is more stable and tested in, in Debian system. That's why, uh, personally speaking, I, I have used, I'm using uh, uh, all the latest version from Git repository, but uh, we consider that this is not so safe. So uh, we installed the, the packet, the, the Debian packet with uh, apt, apt get, uh, system. 
Um, we have uh, five Zen hypervisors installed uh, to to the, to Zen servers. We are using 4.1 Zen hypervisor. Uh, we have Flowvisor 081 in uh, VM hosted inside Frankfurt Zen. Uh, we are using OCF uh, version 0 0.3. Uh, as Leonardo said, right now the 0 0.5 is the stable one. Uh, but we we started uh, months ago, a couple months ago, so there was no 0 0.5 then. And um, the um, the user VMs uh, can uh, can only um, can only use the uh, Debian image. As uh, Albert said, maybe an option, uh, uh, an extension of, of OCF would uh, uh, include some other flavors for user VMs. Yeah, well, that's what explained also yesterday. Yes. Uh, you can either change the image that by default comes or you can implement some of a list of different images that are installed in the server, so you can pick up from one another. The user, it's very easy for the user uh, to pick up uh, from from user GUI perspective uh, another flavor. So uh, we should, uh, if if we like, if there is a need, the requirement from our users, we have to implement it to the back end, but. Uh, as uh, Leonardo said, uh, this will not be so so difficult. This is the um, the overview of our architecture. Uh, you can see the the blue boxes. We have two uh, open flow uh, switches implemented as open V switches uh, to 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 our five different pops. We have uh, Zen servers that are back-to-back -back, uh, linked with four uh, with four Ethernet uh, links to the OpenV switches. So uh, the VMs can use these four uh, uh, Ethernet links back-to-back -back in order to uh, to be connected with uh, the OpenFlow switches. And we have to each pop. We have uh, four links that, uh, let's say, four app links that uh, uh, implement the um, the full mesh topology inside the AMP. So inside this cloud, the AMP cloud, there is a full mesh topology from one pop to all the other pops. All these all these open switch servers are connected to the pop to the GM pop. Yes, yes, and the, the, the MX, MX, the exactly. So um, each each open v suite has four cables that are going to Zen uh, server, and uh, four cables that they are going to dedicated ports uh, to MX boxes. All right, so that's, and it's also four yes, dedicated ports yes. on the MX side. Yes, because. Uh, uh, each pop uh, has connectivity with uh, dedicated links with the other pops. So we have five, five pops minus one itself. There are five uh, dedicated ports to the MX boxes that uh, implement uh, through them. Uh, we implement the MPLS. These are gigabit either. Yes, one gig port. Um, <clears throat> So, um, and that's the static configuration, so you don't have to. Yes, uh, the the configuration from down the side yeah. is static. It's static. They, they have uh, provided us with a full methodology, mm -hmm. and after that, uh, <clears throat> the uh, the user can uh, choose uh, which port uh, will use to forward uh, his packet under his and the user slide. can pick the VLAN, the actual VLAN. Or... Exactly. The, we we limit the user to one VLAN, but after that, uh, the user or to a range of VLANs, and after that, the user uh, can uh, forward with um, his own logic 
the reference frames from one pop to another, creating uh, rings or star topologies or semi mesh, full mesh, whatever. The forwarding logic is implemented to the user controller from uh, inside his VLAN. Mm -hmm. uh, Dante and uh, OpenFlow facility has nothing to do with um, with the actual topology that uh, will be chosen by the user. So uh, I would like to say that these five uh, pops are connected with uh, the MPLS links, and this is our data plane. So uh, we have another uh, connection to these boxes that is uh, over um, the anti-IP network and is used for uh, our uh, is used for our management uh, connectivity plus. Uh, the control plane connectivity of the user, meaning that the flow visor should be connected with an open a user open flow controller. So this traffic is not is not going through the data plane uh, we have constructed. The data plane we have constructed constructed with the MPLS is, is used only for the data traffic and nothing more. We use a, a management interface of each um, server in order to uh, maintain, operate, and we use another uh, interface that is also uh, on the anti-IP network. I will show you the IPs and the uh, topology later on. Um, for the in order to implement the um, user side control plane. So you can see the, the, the blue the blue line mm -hmm. is through uh, is IP connectivity through the anti IP network. Uh, the the red lines are also over the anti IP, and we have this cloud over there without lines that uh, is the MPLS data plane. Uh, of course, through the anti-IP network, uh, we have uh, internet connectivity with uh, these servers. So the, um, the management interfaces of our servers, uh, including uh, special purpose management interfaces for our operations, plus some other interfaces that are used uh, for user uh, management of, of, of the VMs, are using um, public IPs. We have. Uh, I will show you later. Okay, this is a better picture. This is a, bit, a better picture to explain the um, the links. Yeah. So uh, we have four links from the MX boxes to the um, OpenVSwitch servers, and these four links are. Um, uh, are a part are part of of our data plane, implementing uh, the data plane. We have uh, some spare ports uh, that can be used for collocation, as we said. And we have four needs for actually we have four ports that uh, connect the OpenV switch with the Zen server. So we have two other ports per. Uh, Per server, the one port that is used uh, for uh, IPMI. So Dante provides us with IPMI access to the server in order to install the operating system from scratch. I mean, including the Zen hypervisor uh, and open and Debian that is used under. So we have a dedicated port for IPMI access. We have a a management port which is used uh, from uh, for, from us for management. I mean, our SSH, for example, access is through the the red uh, the red port. Mm -hmm. So uh, in everyday operations, we are using uh, a management port, um, the red one, 
and of course the same stands for the Zen server. So we're running SSH in one interface. We have the the emergency uh, solution of IPMI connectivity, and uh, Zen Hyper and Zen Box has another dedicated interface interface that is used only for user management access. So if a user wants uh, wants to to be connected to the management interface of his VM, uh, we'll use an IP that is behind the blue interface. So our management, our OpenFlow facility uh, management is separated and isolated from uh, user management. And this is for many reasons, security and, and so where where OpenFlow comes to the picture. Uh, okay. So what what OpenFlow does? OpenFlow, I mean, you, you, okay. you can you can you can replace that open source switch with a normal switch. You exactly. have the same functionality, right? But what OpenFlow does in this in this case, so you you give the ability to dynamically reconfigure the VLAN, so what? Or you can um, reconfigure the VLAN on a normal switch either. No, uh, um, uh, when you have a normal suite, uh, you are stick to the, to the Mac uh, for learning and forwarding mechanism. Okay. Um, with OpenV suite uh, in OpenFlow mode, yes. the user can implement inside his VLAN his own forwarding logic. So we don't have so much. There is no blue link to the open source switch. So yes. How, how do your user uh, yes. uh, control good question. open source switch? Good question. The user, uh, there is no need for the user to interact directly with the open switch. And this is, uh, and uh, the explanation for this is that the open switch is connecting and is connected and controlled by the flow visor. The flow visor is a okay, so access to, okay. so exactly. To access to the flow so visor. there is a blue line to the flow visor. Exactly. Okay. From open flow controller to the flow visor. So flow visor has two interfaces. Okay. One blue blue interface with uh, for user interaction and uh, let's say one red uh, interface that is uh, is connected to the same network with our uh, open switch. Can you virtualize the flow visor or just one single flow visor? Or there is no need for isolation in the flow visor level? Right now we're using one flow visor. If, if a user, theoretically, um, if a user can, uh, you, can uh, install another flow visor on top of this flow visor, if, uh, if he wants to do something strange or... Okay. But this is a flow visor specific uh, thing. So, for example, if a user deploy, um, if a user uh, request uh, is for two VLANs, uh, a user can uh, install a flow visor or on its own VM. Uh, he can connect his flow visor with uh, our flow visor through the blue line. And he can he can create two users, one user with the, the first VLAN, and the other user with the second VLAN. But this is virtualization over. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's line sync over okay, line. So that's, that's a more complex case. Yeah. In, in a simple case, OpenFlow is only used for management purposes. Huh? For oh. for the operator to sorry, manage the open. You the open business, sorry. Yes, the open the, these links, these black links, are used for uh, user so data traffic. All right. uh, so uh, these black links are part uh, is part so of not, not of the data feature that you expose to the user as a no as by the, default. The, yeah, we expose open flow capabilities through flow visor. There is no direct connection. Okay, but you have one single flow visor. So how many users can? Access the flow wire. Okay, if you find more than 10 users, I will uh, clap in my hands in any case. 
I know, no, I'm just thinking. Uh, I, okay. I, I, I don't know, know about the real is it? I know, I know. The Jean Come on. It depends. It depends. Uh, it depends because it's not the the number of the user. It's not only. It's not the the limitation. The actual limitation. The the produced control plane traffic is the limitation of the flow visor. So. If we suppose that we have uh, two uh, very, uh, if we have two slices and these two slices, uh, the controller logic from user perspective is um, reactively, not proactively, and we have uh, all the time queries from the open, from open v switches to flow vision from flow vision to these uh, two open flow controllers, what should I do with this packet, with, with the other packet? With only two slices, you can overload the flow visor. Mm -hmm. If you have a um, more conservative users, that their logic inside their VLAN is to, uh, to implement, to install flow entries that, that are handling their packets inside their VLAN. Um, proactively, then you have many, many, uh, you have a few queries from the FMP switch to flow visor and up there to the open flow controller. So it depends. Mm -hmm. You cannot know uh, how uh, overloaded or not will be mm -hmm. the flow visor and the open switch. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, the same stands for the open switch. I mean, it depends from the, the queries and from the number of queries, not from the number of uh, of packets actually, because yeah. we are talking about the control plane right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if the switch knows what to do with the packet, there is no control traffic. Exactly. Uh -huh. If you have already installed your uh, flow entries that are uh, uh, and, and, the, and the packets are hitting to this flow and entry. via the flow visor, the user can enforce. Exactly. It's forwarding logic. Exactly. Open. And that's the only communication. Exactly. And after that, there is no yes. need for the user to, uh, or for the control plane yes. to touch. Yeah. Uh, uh, you have some messages, hello messages, and yeah, okay. live, uh, yeah, keep, alive, keep right. alive messages, and things like that. And some statistics uh, going from the open flow switch to the controller. For example, there is a notification message from um, flow expiration from the open flow switch, to, but this is not the, the problem. The problem is when you are trying to install um, uh, very uh, a, a large number of flows inside the open switch. So uh, the problem, the let's say the the bottleneck is the control plane, not the data plane, because. Uh, I can say I can say that because uh, we are using um, uh, kernel module, open open v switch kernel module. So the packets are not going to the to the user space. Uh, open v switch has two modes. One uh, open v open v switch can run in user space at all, and uh, you have an alternative to run um, a kernel module and uh, just control the kernel module from the user space. So we are using the second uh, choice. Uh, we have installed, uh, we have, comp no, okay, we are using Packaton. So we download, we just download the, the proper kernel module and we have insert, we have inserted the kernel module uh, to, the, to the kernel. So we have uh, higher performance to the data plane. Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, I have uh, one question. Maybe I just missed uh, something. So, uh, okay. Yes, yes. Uh, so, without the wider open this switch will make the connection towards uh, the controller. Or am I right? Can we switch it through flow visor to the no, user? With, uh, no, with the scenario without flow visor. Oh, okay. Yes. So. Uh, open with switch in general would make a connection toward the open flow controller, right? And now you have a flow visor which is acting like a proxy for mm -hmm. 
for dropping messages from different uh, controllers. So, okay, OpenMe switch is making now a connection toward the flow visor, mm -hmm. which is acting like one controller, mm -hmm. and behind uh, there are a lot of controllers. Yes. So how how does it, uh, this connection is handled from uh, flow visor to the controllers? Okay. And how is so it differentiate? So what are those controllers? Those are the user. Yeah, user, user implement controllers. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Flowvisor is a middleware with two interfaces: a southbound interface that is connected to the switches. Mm -hmm. This interface is acting as a controller, yeah. and in the same time, Flowvisor has another northbound interface mm -hmm. that, uh, to open Flow controllers' eyes, is acting like a switch. Uh -huh. So it's a transparent proxy controller. Okay. The, open, the user open flow controller does not know that is communicating through flow visor. Oh, right, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's good. But, uh, so it makes, for example, five different TCP sessions exactly. to, the, to the controller to simulate five different switches. Yeah. Uh, 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 yes. Flow visor. Yes. Is acting like a switch to the controller. Yes. So, because you have five different switches in the policy, uh -huh. then it will simulate that and make five five connections to mm -hmm. the controller, right? Uh, I'm not sure for that. I'm not sure. I, I don't know if if there are five connections. That would be logical. Yeah, that would be logical. Uh, I, I'm not no. sure. I'm not okay. sure. I don't want to say something that I, I don't know. Okay, okay. I was just. You know, maybe how this is, you know, maybe this is the the way they are they are implementing this. Maybe they are uh, they are using only one um, only one connection, but with they are uh, passing uh, messages that has that, that they are uh, related that they are forwarded from the open flow from the entire set of of the open. Open flow switches you have underneath. I'm not sure for that, but okay. Uh, Never mind. I'm just was curious, so it's not important. Okay. So um, <clears throat> this is uh, Dante view uh, for uh, each pop. Dante has implemented uh, with. Uh, with VLANs, the, the the connectivity between our servers and uh, uh, LAN suites. I, I, I'm not sure if I, I know that. Um, yes. So for the management interfaces, we don't have dedicated uh, MX ports. We have uh, connectivity with uh, the LAN suites of of Dante uh, of the ANT. So. You can notice that, uh, <laughs> for example, VLAN one two one is used both for uh, uh, vSwitch management interface and Zen management interface. And later on, you will see that they, these two interfaces um, have uh, IPs from the same subnet. So we are using it's 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 quite. Uh, is it, we, we are using one subnet for management interfaces, one subnet for IPME interface, IPMI interfaces, and uh, one entire dedicated subnet for uh, user management interfaces. As we said, uh, we, uh, we have user management interface on two Zen because OpenVSwitch is not directly connected to the uh, to the user equipment. Krista, uh, sorry, have you sent this slide to me before? No, yes. no. Can, can you continue no, it? Because the guys, uh, the remote people want to... Yes, of course. Want to look at it. I, I thought uh, through... Um, yeah, maybe they threw some more to them or something. I just email me, I'll, I'll upload to the document store. The 
Yes. Yes. Uh, we are uh, running on out of month uh, open flow. Okay. In in flowvisor, you mean when uh, flowvisor is connected? Yes. Probably. Uh, to have only one information and to use the inbound. Inbound. Uh, I see. I don't know what I We'll send it to the link to the SAT list. SAT, whatever SAT is. SAT, mm, I don't have the. Uh, do you know the full? Uh, okay, Peter. I don't bother to say. Uh, as you can see, we are using a slash 29 subnet for uh, IPMI because we have only two servers per pop. Uh, there are different subnets for everything. Yes, there is a different sub subnet. Uh, this was more convenient for uh, Dante. Uh, it wasn't a big deal for us. I mean, the only thing we need is one IP, we don't care. For if it is in the same subnet, they are uh, they are um, configuring the firewall as well. So, uh, and we, we are using a slash twenty seven subnet for um, uh, a bigger one for uh, in order to allocate IPs to the VMs of our users. So, uh, this is uh, the firewall in rules. In in Dante eyes, the, the, there is uh, there are just three VLANs with uh, three subnets per pop. So they are implementing their firewall rules based on on this logic. So for uh, management, NF means network factory. This is our management interface. Our Open flow facility management uh, subnet. Um, so from um, site from pop to the router, we have permission to send whatever we want. Uh, from router to site, from router to our servers, we can. They permit. They are permitting uh, established connections. Uh, they're permitting uh, connections from other pops, uh, and they're permitting uh, traffic from predefined from some predefined subnets. For now, the predefined subnets are I to cut uh, subnet, switch subnet, and into a subnet. So you should uh, send an email to Dante to Sebastiano. Uh, I suppose you know Sebastiano is one of mm -hmm. the no, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, and Sebastiano should add uh, your subnet. I don't know who is going to, to manage uh, the facility, but uh, you have to put your subnet uh, to this list in order to have SSH access, for example, from your uh, 
side from your country to to the management uh, network. So uh, for for the users, uh, we per we are permitting anything because the user has to. Uh, SSH has to connect his controller, has to transfer files, whatever. So uh, the management interface of each VM is open without firewall at all. Of course, if you like, you can change this, but uh, you are going to have uh, much more requests from users open this and yeah. that. It's, it's, it's your choice to decide. Um, and we have and the, the idea is to implement different user roles. So there are, you know, low-level users, and then there are the expert users, the super users, whatever. I don't yeah. know. And at least that's what I, that's what I capture yeah. from the discussion. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's subject to discussion. But at least, uh, yeah, might, maybe might want to set up some some firewall and rules maybe. for those users yes. who are, you know, students or whatever. You know, not not the, not the real. Uh, yes. Um, So uh, there is another uh, category of rules for the IPMI, stricter group. Um, from router to servers, only traffic from these predefined subnets is permitted. And from the, from the site to the router and back to the predefined subnets, only established connections are permitted. So you, know, you, you probably need, if you're adding some subnets, you probably need to, to update uh, the route to the server. The router? Uh, the route to the server. Because you have a, a number of interfaces at the server. Yes. So you, you probably have a, a route on the side uh, for you know routing the the packet to appropriate interface. No, actually there is no need for for this because for the management in the we have a default r r routing entry for uh, which points the the management interface of of Zen server and open the switch. And we have a, um, we have a separate uh, the IPMI is completely separate, of course, IPMI, and um, I do not remember what we are doing to for the uh, users. Yeah, uh, to uh, yes, uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't okay, remember, okay, okay. but. No uh, we can see later on uh, in the CLI. Well, I don't remember exactly what we have done. So um, I have created uh, um, an Excel <laughs> worksheet with uh, the entire set of, of uh, required information. Um, for each pop, the, the the picture is is like this. We have, for example, for Amsterdam. We have uh, one Zen server with uh, IPv4 uh, IP and IP version 6 IP. Um, <coughs> and each Zen server to each pop has um, an IPMI, an MNG, and MNG user interface. So you can see the entire configuration, IP configuration of, of, of this. Uh, Servers and the same stands for the OBS. I think it's quite clear. Or not? We have three interfaces. Uh, you can see that. Yes, this is. You can see that OBS server doesn't have a MNG user interface, as we saw before. So the. Um, OVS server has only two interfaces, and uh, Zen server has three interfaces for management purposes, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a data plane topology 
with uh, every detail. Um, okay. Let's start from here. Let's let's see. Uh, it's, it's, it's the same thing uh, again and again. Uh, let's uh, try as an example uh, Frankfurt. Frankfurt has a Zen server with four ports, four big ports, directly connected to Frankfurt OVS. You can see the numbering here. So you can see that F16 from Zen server is directly connected to F16 to Frankfurt OVS server. And so on. Uh, built in, uh, we are using a built in interface. It doesn't matter, it's a GIG interface, uh, which is uh, named from Debian OS as FNIDEN uh, for management purposes. And uh, you can see that um, Frankfurt OVS has uh, four more ports that are directly connected to Dante equipment, to Dante MX box. So um, this setup is identical to our five box. The only thing it is, is different is the, the numbering. I mean, uh, when they are trying to, to put the caves, they, you can see that in some cases, F7, for example, is is going to. Oh, let me see. The, the naming is not is not the same, but I yeah. have I have write down everything, so you will not you know which interface is going where where is going, and you can see um, the lines. These are the direct the point to point uh, layer to MPLS links with these lines. So. Supposing we have a, a problem connectivity from Frankfurt to Amsterdam, you can see from here that yes, that uh, S five port from OVS Frankfurt uh, node is going to S sixteen to OVS Amsterdam. So in case. Uh, you should uh, you have to to troubleshoot something. There's a problem to this link. You can uh, just turn off the, the OVS process. You can handle uh, this uh, in interface uh, as a simple Debian uh, Ethernet Linux interfaces, and you can start pinging and doing simple things in order to see if the problem is to your side, meaning to the OVS, flow visor, etc., etc., or to the MPLS links. When, uh, when a problem uh, arises, uh, I, I, I try to ping from, from, let's say, from the F5 interface to F16 interface, and um, I said to Sebastiano that, okay, Sebastiano, I'm trying just to, to, to inject some Ethernet frames to this link, and I cannot see anything at all to the other side. So you must do something. It's done the side that should uh, come into. And uh, open this switch does not support uh, Ethernet uh, As far as I know, no. No. Uh, actually, Ronald said that uh, yeah. he's going to implement so um, yeah. on top of uh, yeah. yeah, because then you could maybe use the, the use it between the switches yeah. in order to see if it is linked. Uh, yes. Uh, but to VPN operation. So for now, there is no such option. Um, I faced a situation where I was able to inject Ethernet frames to the MPLS link, but I wasn't able to inject uh, tag frames, VLAN tag frames, to the MPLS link. So this was quite uh, strange because, okay, I was, I, in, in uh, my first trials, I was saying, what is going on? I cannot, 
And then I tried the uh, VLAN tag French and I saw that this is the problem. And uh, I talked with Sebastian and Sebastian was okay, we have a, a complicated configuration here and I have to okay. But uh, if you have any problem with these links, you should uh, try Ethan frames and uh, separately you should uh, try to inject VLAN tag frames because users actually uh, going that way. Yeah, exactly. So um, Ethernet uh, connectivity is not uh, is not uh, updated. Um, ah, okay. Another thing is that another thing is that uh, Ethernet uh, Ethernet interfaces have a different name to OpenFlow context. Each Ethernet interface uh, is um, defined with a port number to inside Open OpenV switch, and this OpenV switch uh, naming is used from the controller side. You cannot say from your controller, from user controller, please forward uh, this and that to F16. You should say that, okay, I want to, uh, I will push a rule um, for this tab, for this flow, and I, the action is to forward uh, from port one, not 16. So uh, I also use this uh, figure to identify which port, open flow port name, um, is uh, the real name of, of the interface. Yes, because one user, for example, will say to, to me or to you, I have a connectivity problem of, uh, to port one. So you, you, you should know the, the real uh, essence interface. And, and this is the actual mapping, so you can see the mappings there. Yes. If you have this yes. Yeah. yeah, but uh, <laughs> there is a, a little uh, problem here. Uh, unfortunately, the OpenFlow version, the OpenV switch version that is uh, now uh, installed, does not permit to the administrator to associate explicitly. Uh, a port, an open flow port number to an Ethernet uh, physical, and there is the mapping is there. I mean, in uh, in the in the data in the data model schema of the open switch, uh, there is a, a field that is saying, okay, this uh, physical interface has this name, but is not editable. In uh, the latest, uh, in latest releases, you can edit, so you can define, and this is, uh, it makes sense. <laughs> uh, you can define uh, every uh, name, uh, every port, uh, open flow port number, uh, with your, uh, <coughs> with your logic to an Ethernet uh, switch, Ethernet, sorry, Ethernet interface. So we cannot change this application, but they are current. They are current, but if you if you change, uh, let's say, a card to, to the server, or if you uh, create another interface uh, in this uh, server, then maybe you should recheck the main. It's a change. Yes. It's the the, the logic is arbitrary. It's not. Uh, documented to open the streets, but they think this, uh, it was, actually it is a mess here, because if uh, something changed, it's not uh, an automatic way. Okay, you can, you can do the following, you can um, use your CLI uh, to, to, ex to see the, the, um, The naming, but you have to check with this uh, figure that indeed F16 in Zen Frankfurt is F1, is port one. 
So the, the, the naming is exposed, but is not editable. But it can change after from reconfiguration to decode. Yeah, that's the thing. Right? Yes. So, so if you do some hardware changes, yes. this mapping happens magically. Yes. And you have to double check in the configuration what yes. is the actual mapping. Yes. yes. And is this behavior documented somewhere, or just because these are the practices that we have to be aware of if we want to operate yes. the but thing? But for uh, good that you mentioned now, but if it's not written down uh, anywhere, it's quite uh, difficult. To it is, uh, for uh, <laughs> and we need we need procedures. You, to, you know, to handle. yes, you will not have problem with uh, the Ethernet in the spaces unless you are going to change uh, hardware cards, but. Uh, for example, I faced this problem when I created the tap interface for uh, in order to interconnect uh, some other islands, yeah. Philly Islands, to this uh, to this uh, tester. So the tap interface, which is going up and down, yeah. uh, and it changes, it is a dynamic interface, can change name, open flow of name. So I had an interface. Uh, with uh, overflow port number nine, an additional uh, interface, and uh, suddenly after uh, there was a problem with the connectivity, the VPN connectivity, I saw that this port was renamed to port 10 or 11. But I haven't seen anything strange for these ports, the hardware ports, hopefully. And according to troubleshooting, as you mentioned before, uh, if I could uh, understand, you can use this line of interfaces, a number, and for example, ping from, I don't know, Frankfurt to London, yeah. and if it's uh, not pingable, then it's probably uh, a PLS program. Yes, then you should call uh, Dante. You yeah, should okay. open a ticket to Dante. If ping works, that means line of interfaces, and if it doesn't work, I don't know, I can think from open flow or using open flow port numbers, or also using the use key? Uh, yes, but in order to be sure that it's not, uh, it's not your problem, I mean, uh, if you, if you um, turn off open v switch and use the Ethernet interface as it, as it is, then you you can be sure that your problem is not yours. I mean, you don't have uh, uh, you separate the problem from the open flow related uh, components, open v switch, flow visor, and open flow controller, mm -hmm. and you have just a server with Linux and an Ethernet uh, interface. So you are acting you are acting like like uh, with uh, the normal way. Uh, but first I have to turn off OpenFlow. Uh, yes, this is recommended. This, uh, uh, yes, uh, in order to be sure and uh, safe enough, I'm doing this because I don't want uh, conflicts with open open v switch and things like that. Theoretically, so uh, there is no need to turn off open v switch and uh, uh, deassociate the port. Uh, it's working. You can uh, put... But also, yeah. but these are the procedures that we have to negotiate with Dante anyway. For instance, if there is a problem, I can open a ticket immediately to Dante. And then Dante can get back to me saying, yeah. look, my, my, this MPLS is fine, so the problem should be at your side. Or we can do other way around. We can also make sure that the problem is not our side, and we have, and and then open a ticket to Dante. But it's just matter of uh, matter of uh, operational procedures. Right? I was trying to be uh, before I communicate with Dante, but that's why Sebastian loves me. But that's what that's what Dante yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. Dante is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then don't with this troubleshooting, if it think is working on the uh, Linux interface uh, layer, then we can check uh, with this uh, open uh, flow form number. Yes, yes. If there, is connection. yes. If there is no connection there, there could be some problem with open flow. Yes, yes. Yes. Or yes. Or yes. If you have Ethernet connectivity, including uh, VLAN tag, 
connectivity. Yeah. And it also depends on who uh, recognizes the problem. If it's, if it's the user who recognizes the problem, I think the first contact point to the user is the dungeon. Anyway. So in that way, so if there is a problem and the user says, I have a problem, the first, the first contact point to the user is Dante. And then Dante will make sure, as you said, that there's no problem with the MPLS on us, and then Dante will ping us for you. Please check the open usage. I think that's the that's the usual normal procedure. Of course, there might some be some cases when you realize that there is a problem. Of mm -hmm. course, you then first have to figure out if the problem is real before you open a ticket to Dante. But I think most of the cases the user mm -hmm. will the user. say, yeah, "I have a problem," yeah, and then problem. then the user will go to Dante by default first, and then Dante will come to us. As a second, step. so we are the, the second escalation yeah, step or the third or whatever. And Dante checks and says it's okay on their side, and if the problem looks like on our side, then uh, we can, what we can do, we can restart the uh, open switch, you know? Yeah, yeah. 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 If it doesn't help, what, what more we can do? I have never faced problem with open switch. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is that uh, the procedure for the, for the management, the problem management or trouble management? I think it depends about the first, second level support who is in the responsibility that for complex problems. Yeah. If you have the user as the first contact to that, then I think the user will say, hey, we have no open flow uh, capability anymore there. And uh, what happens with, with, with the equipment? Dante comes to you and says, hey, this is an iteration process. You need, uh, and you need the closed circle of communication that you can. Yeah, exactly. Well, we, we had a discussion. We had one discussion about this okay. with Dante. And Dante said they will investigate first. So the user will go to Dante by yeah. default. They will investigate first the data plane. <coughs> okay. And so they can log in yeah. to the uh, MX. So they, have, they, can, they can do that stuff. And, once they are sure that the data plane is, is correct, then we are the next population. Uh, rather than they will be, mm. look, the problem should be at your side. Okay, but there are um, many possibilities to have a problem with uh, GUI or OCS, yeah, for yeah, example. That's, 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 <laughs> that's on our side. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I I have a question just to, uh, for, for this previous picture, maybe maybe it's too yeah. early for, for this, but uh, how do you make the the mapping between a user uh, with virtual machines on the ZEN server and uh, appropriate ports over the open v switch? So you have a four, four ports? Yes, these four ports are, to ZEN server are uh, shared uh, to the user side. I mean that each VM on top of, of the Zen servers uh, has uh, four um, virtual Ethereum interfaces that are connected to these uh, four ports, Zen ports through Linux bridges that uh, Leonardo showed us yesterday. So the thing there is that um, OCF system, whenever it creates a new VM, um, it it also creates a, a profile to the IP tables in order to isolate the user inside his VLAN. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if we have a user with a, a VLAN 1, um, this user is limited to use VLAN 1 in these four ports. Okay, so you have available four ports, all four ports. Yes, yeah. yes. And you have uh, already, let's say, put it, uh, a stick to your side yes. of your real line. Yes. Okay, and, and what about a uh, user who has a two virtual machine? The user. Uh, okay. Is it possible to have a two virtual machine? Yes. Uh, a user can create two VMs per Zen, for example. Yeah. In that case, uh, 
he can uh, use the allowed VLANs, the VLANs associated with his lies in these two VLANs. Mm. So another machine will get another uh, It depends from the user. Mm. It depends. Uh, he can choose that uh, he wants two VMs with the same, uh, yes. But uh, the the VMs of of the user uh, are connected uh, on through Open V Suites. I mean that when you have two VMs here and no. they are uh, are property of, of the same user, they cannot communicate by passing the OBS. So the IP table rules saying that the only permitted way is from the VM, the, from the VM interface to the physical interface. Okay. So there is no communication, communication between the between uh, VMs yeah. here. Okay. So you have multiple VMs of the same user that are uh, connected to through OBS, each other, okay. and of course with the other VMs around. Okay. Another question, just an operational related question. SA2 is going to operate the OpenV switch on the flow wiser. Does it make sense to? separate these two things and say the open VP switch or whatever switch would happen that in the in the future we're gonna have hardware switches or we're gonna use the the, the ambient process to, to do open so I don't know. Would it make sense to separate the operations there? The one one entity is responsible for the flow wiser and the other for the Dante is responsible for the uh, for the open research or for the hardware switches or for the end. Because I, I'm just thinking, I mean, if you go back one slide, yes. so a, a, a potential roadmap or, uh, you know, improvement of this is that we're going to throw away all the open world switches yes. or, or one open world switch, yes, yes. We buy a hardware switch or yes. use the Juniper Amix box. If, if, you know, if, if they are going to support, as a, as yes. A, as an open source switch. Yes. So in that case, Dante will operate that anyway. Or we can ask Dante to operate the hardware switches, or and they are operating the the Juniper Amixes anyway. So if they implement the open flow yeah. within and do not in the open in the mm -hmm. Amix boxes, mm -hmm. then of course it goes into their responsibility <laughs> to to run the yeah. open flow. Right. But does it make sense in that case to run the flow wiser, for instance, by by SA2, or in or in that case we have to give the flow wiser to Dante as well? <laughs> No, you I can't. Know. Really good okay. Uh, the thing is, you put two different teams for managing, you will have more more problems of communication. All right. Okay. So, from one side, it's better for us if we can forget about the facility bar, and we just put uh, our hands dirty with the software, which is provisor and app of that. That would be nice. But from the other part, I believe that. Provisor mm -hmm. and the switches are too tied together, so it's, yeah, right. I'm not sure about that. Maybe it could work. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's just a question. No, it, it, it could work, work to have the uh, one team for Dante for the hardware facility and mm -hmm. the, the uh, in principle, uh, I I totally agree with Albert. I think it's not um, it's not so big deal to to I I mean it's not so heavy to to operate both of them but if uh, for some reasons you want to create a demarcation point uh, this demar demarcation point can can be the um, the control connection between the flow visor which is the controller and, and the, the switch uh, uh, and the switch yeah. no because no. you talked about Dante and yeah and sa2 yeah so you have um, Let's say special purpose controller flow yeah. visor, and from the other side is the no, the, the 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 open flow switch. Yeah. I don't care yeah, yeah, what right. is it. Okay. And so the demar the demarcation point is the the con the control connection. Okay. The open flow connection between the switch and the controller. 
in uh, in so that, that is that make sense or does that make sense or, or because you said those two are tied together so one one yeah, if, I, if you want to put somewhere uh, uh, a wall or uh, let's say a uh, demarcation it could be uh, uh, that, yeah. 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 so it's basically subject to discussion yeah. so they don't let me let me make by the little person they check in CLS anyway then can also check uh, yeah this is going as this point can yes could make sense. And the harder part and this anyway is for us to, to to check the control network and the flow wire. Yeah. So that's that's way more. But then maybe we lose we lose control of what hardware is good there. This was my question. So if you go to the hardware, for example, and see if, if you know and you can see that we have been all the whole open usage is also different releases. We have older ones and new ones, and this will be updated. Or hardware boxes that should be updated by firmware and so on, and uh, operating systems. So, yeah, if the responsibility for hardware support is a at all, this makes sense. They do that, and I think it's also important that you say from the for the open flow stuff and software management and handling and. The, 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 the data forwarding or the, the control plane itself, it makes sense that this is your, your responsibility. Yeah, and it does, yeah. <laughs> and the, uh, the latest idea is that we're going to use all the existing boxes from various projects from Federica. For, so Dante will, won't be able to take over all that yeah, right. for sure. I mean, mm -hmm. if right. they do something, they will tender a pick one product which is supported the like with the all the latest stuff and they they might be able to operate that but they won't take over all these crab boxes that you can collect from various uh, various uh, projects. So that's that's something yeah. that we have to operate, which is a nightmare anyway. So I understand why that's why I understand why they don't want to take that over. <laughs> okay, I got it. Yeah. So uh, I think we have already explained the Proxy actions of flow visor. Ah, we can. Okay, this is. It's at end of life. If you are, if, 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 if you are going, to, if you are going to follow um, the um, the schema you said, the demarcation point is here between Dante and Tessay. Yeah, that would be that would be logical and even easier for us. But that, yeah. But in that case, you need uniform open. In that case, uniform switches, hardware switches, or yes, switches yes. Or whatever. Exactly. And so you, you have Otherwise, to train a Dante down engineer yeah, to yeah. open flow. Exactly. At least <laughs> they are trained. I think they've got the same training. Yeah, they had the yeah, they had two weeks, okay. uh, a two-day uh, open flow training. Oh yeah, so the extended long. version of the okay. one that we. To be done. honest, it's not enough. <laughs> Uh, uh, Stephen Wallace, the presenter yeah. yesterday, I was in Cambridge for uh, so a tutorial. Yes, yes. I was, was uh, six time. months ago. In, yeah, yes, in October. Yeah. Last. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I don't. Uh, maybe you you remember this? Uh, he said that I'm reading the. The specific the open flow specification again and again, and uh, I can see <laughs> new words here. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, uh, in uh, many cases, you can see ambiguous, um, uh, let's say, explanations of the. Uh, but that's why you have to talk to a vendor. I mean, yeah, you, yeah, you can read the specifications hundred times. Yes, it depends on. It's not enough. Juniper to Juniper it depends exactly. on how Juniper exactly. read it and yeah, the, exactly. it and implement it. So yeah. the only way is to talk to the vendor who implements it and then but put it into your point. operational. The vendor doesn't stuff always implement the whole specification. Exactly. That's, that's open, and yeah. they just. Implement whatever they that, like. Uh, you know, they, that's why they created the in-center interoperation center. This was clever enough from their side because they they created a, a center which uh, is is used for for these purposes in order to check if one box uh, from one vendor is uh, can work with another vendor. Um, so this is the flow space. This is uh, the most uh, complicated part of. Uh, 
of uh, slicing uh, method. So, as you already know, we have uh, an open flow tuple which defines the possible uh, open flow entries. Uh, each open flow tuple includes destination uh, port, source port, those bit protocol, etc., etc. The flow visor is creating a, a superset of these uh, fields, including the slice name, the data path ID, uh, and the import. What that means? This means that I can create a flow space and I can associate this flow space with explicitly with a slice and I can provision, for example, VLAN 100 to specific ports, to a specific slice. <coughs> so I can have three ports associated with um, slice A only for VLAN 100, and I can have three other ports associated with another user in the same VLAN. So increasing, in order to, to define a slice, you have to use the entire set of the open flow tuple plus the slice, the data path ID, which is the switch name, data path ID is the switch name in open flow uh, parlance, and the, the import. So you associate the open flow tuple with a port, and with uh, suite plus a, a user. This is the the, the full um, set of uh, flow space inside. So the the flow visor is forwarding open flow queries from the switches based on this uh, couple on this policy. <laughs> this is something like a policy. When a query is coming from the open flow switch, Flowvisor has to decide where this message should be forwarded to controller A or controller B. So he should match this uh, open flow query from a switch, from any switch, to a specific uh, controller or to more than one control, but let's uh, let's take the the, the, simple, the simplest uh, scenario. So uh, it's reading um, every policy, and if um, if uh, Flowvisor can find that uh, this packet query, open flow query, should go to this or that controller, we'll forward the message. Flowvisor has no restriction. Uh, uh, meaning that it, it doesn't care if uh, if uh, we'll uh, forward the message to one or three or uh, four controllers. But if you want isolation, you should configure with a way the flow visor that is uh, isolating the messages. And here we introduce the VLAN slicing method. We are saying that our policy inside Flowvisor will use a specific VLAN range or a VLAN, a single VLAN, which will be binded with only one uh, open flow controller. So, based on, on this policy, you implement the slicing. The slicing means isolation at the same time. So somehow you should you should create a policy which will force the isolation of the of the control messages because here we are talking we are talking about control plane slicing, which means at the same time data plane slicing. Afterwards.
So what the user wants to install this uh, controller uh, in order to, to communicate with the provider is it uh, is installed in a Zen server <coughs> on uh, Frankfurt or other location or it is very good question. The user uh, can uh, install his own controller wherever he wants. The north bound of, of the flow visor uh, can communicate with, yes. So it can be at my premises and exactly. communicating over yes. there. Yes. Can, yeah. can we get back just one step? So there yeah. we have a user. And he wants to implement a topology, something, a ring or, mm -hmm. or I don't know, a spanning tree or whatever. Then he sets up his rules, and then he puts his, his these rules into the flow visor. So in that case, there is no need for a specific uh, control user controller, right? No. Uh, the the um, the flow visor is not storing uh, open flow rules. There is no database. No, no. The, the, oh. there is a, uh, there is a database for the policy for the flow space of its controller, of its user. So in real time, flow visor is reading this policy that, database. That policy defines the uh, the, the for what okay, how the data plane works. Right? The, the, this policy is def defines the um, the forwarding of control messages the, of the open flow messages, not uh, the data plane messages. I mean, we have okay. Uh, in principle, we should uh, an open flow controller is. Um, is manipulating the data plane. But we have to choose which controller is going to manipulate a slice of the data plane. For doing this, we have to slice the, the control logic. So we have to say that this, control, this controller is going to handle only uh, a part of the data plane. Somehow we have to separate the control messages, the open flow queries from the open flow switches, to different controllers. So somehow in this box, in this middleware, which is called flow visor, we should define uh, where we are going to, to send the open who is permitted to decide for specific queries of the open flow switches. So when a, a, a open flow query from a switch is is uh, create is created for let's say VLAN one in our case, the for the logic of flow visor based on these flow spaces is saying that okay VLAN one is as is explicitly associated with slice one <coughs> user one. So he, uh, flow visor is going to send this open flow query uh, to uh, a specific controller. And this controller is going to decide the data plane logic, which will be forwarded through flow visor to the open flow. Okay, so the controller designs the data plane logic. Exactly. Yeah. And the flow visor Not the flow visor. I don't know. No, the no. Controller. Just the process. Just and yesterday, the process. yesterday when we did when we did the slide thing and stuff, there was no other controller. There was just only the flow button. Right. Mm. No, no, there is no. No, no. Uh, maybe you use the OBS uh, or yeah. CDN tool. Yes. Am I right? right? Yes. We had we had OBS <laughs> in place. We had a flow visor and we had the controller. And you had, had the controller. Three, yeah, we had oh, three right. experiments. One was without flow visor. Yeah, I think. Mm -hmm. And one was with, with the flow visor and the learning process. Okay. Yeah. But in the case when we had no flow visor, we had the controller. Yeah, yeah controller. right. And the learning controller. And in yeah. the yeah. case we were creating a slice. Yes. Yeah. 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 So you were creating right. those policies. Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. So 
The flow no. is not the controller. No, okay, that was no. my misunderstanding. The flow so visor is just taking uh, the policy, the flow space policy exactly. in real time. Okay. And nothing more. Mm -hmm. So it's a policy service. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you have more controls, you need uh, the isolation and push the yeah, right. The okay. flow visor okay. is, uh, okay. is pushing the control plane policy mm -hmm. to the network. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the reason we, we can uh, slice and virtualize the, 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 our network, mm -hmm. the control logic actually. And after that, a specific controller is going to to push uh, its own policy, data plane policy. So, so if you if I could understand, if you have only one site in the network, then you don't need flow visor. Exactly. And only one controller for it. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah, now I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. But it this could it also is, be it is, it is it really is a controller, but yeah. High level. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> let's talk about open research. Yeah. Uh, as I said before, uh, there are two uh, versions of open research. One version is uh, kernel module. Uh, including some uh, user space tools and uh, ADB and the other uh, version is a um, user space only implementation of the entire uh, software of the entire open suite. Um, you already know uh, that it was initiated by Nisira, now Vimware. Uh, and uh, they are saying that uh, is a production quality product. I don't fully agree with this, but uh, they, are, they are working on it. It's quite good, and I suppose that they have code that is not open source. It's not exposed to our eyes, so. Uh, no, no, it's open source, as you can see, Apache 2 and the, uh, but I mean, okay, I suppose they have some modules that are yeah, not... Yeah, uh, specific modules, maybe. Yes, mm -hmm. some specific. Um, they call that, they call that, Okay, <laughs> yes, <laughs> but maybe they have implemented some other modules that are not... It's like Google gonna see and all that. Exactly. Open source, you know, but you, cannot, <laughs> you still cannot create your Google data center. You know? Exactly. <laughs> Something is missing there. <laughs> Something is missing, yeah. Okay. Uh, so the, they, are tar they are targeting to hypervisor market. That's why they have uh, created uh, versions for uh, Zen and KVM. The, actually, the um, the kernel module, the data path, the forwarding module is the same, but they have uh, created the proper wrappers yeah. for each uh, OS and for each uh, hypervisor. Uh, they have already integrated uh, uh, OpenVSwitch with OpenStack and OpenQRM and OpenNebula. I'm not sure uh, if they, everything works that works there, but it's okay. They're saying that is compatible with OpenStack and OpenNebula and things like that. Right now, uh, so in general, it works on the hypervisor level, not on the VM level, right? On the VM? No. It works on the hypervisor level, not on yes. the Yes, <coughs> yes, yes. There is no, there, in general, there is no the restriction. You can install an OpenV suite inside the uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. in, in this implementation, there is no hypervisor, right? So there is a Debian package and open research and stuff, and that's it. So the hardware is. Uh, we are using a Debian operating system with uh, OpenV Suite kernel module. Yeah. 
and the um, usual uh, open vSuite user space software. You will see the architecture in the next slide. Um, so the official um, <coughs> support is uh, of open vSuite is for OpenFlow version one. They have some uh, special extensions, Nicer extensions. You can define in open vSuite you can define um, extended open flow tabs. For example, uh, there are some other fields to the open flow entry, some cookies and IV version 6 uh, address and things like that, uh, which of course are used from Nicira in order to, and now VimWare in order to implement their data center solutions. Uh, but they are open. I mean, if you if you write your code in your controller, you can send uh, the messages to the OpenFlow suites and use these tabs for uh, OpenFlow. You you can uh, use these uh, extended OpenFlow entries in order to for lookup or uh, purposes. Um, the latest release is version one point ten. Uh, you can download it from the Git repository. They have uh, VLAN uh, support, HTTP support, if you like. But uh, okay, I, here I should say that uh, OpenV suites can be used without OpenFlow. It's not a suite that should be connected in any case with an OpenFlow controller in order to operate. You can use OpenV Suites as a machine learning suite. Right, yeah. uh, you can okay. So you can, um, uh, for example, in uh, in Linux environment, you can replace Linux bridge with OpenV Suites. We have done this in Novi project because uh, there was a need to stitch. VLANs with GRE tunnels from the other side. So we we did uh, GRE tunnels to uh, to an open V suite from one side, and from the other side we associated some VLANs to the open V suites. Uh, <clears throat> so theoretically, there is uh, traffic policing per VM or per uh, queue. You you can define uh, queues. Uh, inside the uh, open suite. Um, there is um, Ethernet over GRE support. It's a suite, so we are talking about Ethernet over GRE. It doesn't make sense to to use IP over uh, GRE uh, uh, virtual interface, uh, logical interface. Um, you can use GRE over IPsec. And uh, actually, after uh, version, uh, they chose to to operate only with uh, GRE Linux kernel uh, interfaces. Uh, in previous versions, they have implemented the GRE logical interface uh, inside OVS code. And uh, later on, they said that, okay, there is an implementation for GRE, uh, for Ethernet over GRE links in Linux kernel. So we are going to use this implementation. Um, you can talk, you can remotely configure uh, uh, the OVS database through JSON RPC. Um, okay, and we said that there, there are two different forwarding engines, one in kernel space and one in user space. Right now, there is a support for Linux kernel 3.3. OpenV Suite is, uh, uh, M uh, is uh, supported uh, right now from Linux kernel, so it is maintained as a, a main module of Linux Linux kernel, officially I mean. 
The latest paid release right now is 1.9. I remind you that we are running on 1.4. I checked yesterday and uh, Debian uh, packaging is right now is uh, is giving uh, 1.4. Uh, but the official stable release from OVS site, site website is 1.9. And the latest development branch is 1.11. Uh, probably OVS will replace Linux Bridge. Uh, and I suppose that this is going to be. This will happen in next year or something like this because it's already supported officially. So I don't see a reason to, to keep Linux Bridge as the main component. This is the Open Visual architecture. If you are using uh, kernel module, you can see the down there the kernel module. And uh, in user space, you have two main components. First one is OBS V Suite D, the daemon, which uh, implements the open flow uh, protocol, the yellow lines. Uh, so open V Suite daemon is communicating through uh, open flow protocol with uh, any controller, flow visor uh, or a normal controller. And um, of course, you should keep somewhere to always DB in our case the entire configuration which is related with uh, with the ports, with open flow, with this uh, flow, with uh, everything that is in under uh, open flow. Uh, sorry, open v suite data model. There is a, a concrete uh, data model which describes every entity inside the and every configuration parameter inside open the switch so you can configure these parameters um, using CLI uh, tools uh, through open the switch daemon uh, or through JSON RPC service from your service you JSON RPC <laughs> So in case you have a large data center, you have a controller which provision the entire setup of your entire data center to this OVSDB server. OVSDB, uh, each, each OpenB switch uh, is communicate with its own OVSDB. So your con your controller through JSON RPC can configure every uh, can push uh, the setup of each open the switch to the DBs. And this um, uh, this configuration, this setup is persistent. So you don't have to write again and again configuration scripts, under slash, etc. folder. This is a great difference between Linux bridge and open switch. Open switch has a specific management interface through this JSON RPC. In in our open flow facility we have three levels of operations. Infrastructure provider for us is Dante, as we said, uh, MPLS links for example, or uh, cable link or uh, I don't know, cooling and things like that are operated by Dante. Uh, our view is the middle. Uh, in the middle, uh, we are operating on top of Zen servers and open v switches. We can create, delete, or uh, monitor the the operations of the VMs, and the user. Um, can implement his own topology with his own open flow controller and of course uh, we give uh, through OCF the ability to create or delete uh, 
uh, VMs or slices or or to change to request uh, a new flow space. So uh, the user through OCF can um, request for another flow space. Uh, he can uh, reduce, delete uh, his own flow space or his own VMs. So from uh, let's see what we are expecting from Zant at least for now. From the end, we are expecting the cabling, the power supply, air conditioning, physical installation and maintenance of the servers, the subnetting, IP version 4, IP version 6, subnetting to the management interfaces. Um, they have allocated uh, the other space. They are also maintaining the DNS zone that is related to, to our facility, um, the firewalling, and uh, the layer to data plane connectivity through the MPLS point to point links. Okay, for now, actually, I don't know, you can change, of course, whatever you want here, but this this was my view uh, when I was operating with Kurt and the other uh, members. Take over this list, so. Yes, so uh, we had to maintain uh, Zen and OBS servers to administer the open suites and the flow visor uh, to check the virtual machine. Uh, Health status. Leonardo helped us here. Uh, <coughs> to upgrade uh, OCF software, I think we made a minor upgrade uh, from to the OCF. From the version you have. Yes, I think we we went from 0 0.3 to 0 0.31. Is it? Yeah, no, I don't. I don't remember. Ah, maybe we upgrade the um, Oxad uh, clients only. Yes. So, but in any case, we control OCF software and uh, we give support uh, to our users because um, some problem may arise from their side. And. We have also to register from our um, GUI the, the the users to the website, and we have to approve the requests. Leonardo showed us the um, operator's GUI to the OCF yesterday. And user is privileged to operate his own controller to create, delete, start and shut down his own VMs and to create a topology, meaning that he can uh, request the flow space in order to control the um, and connect his uh, VMs on top of, of our facility. So the, the topology is enforced by the controller? Users. Yes, but first, uh, the user should uh, request through his own, through his GUI the flow space, yeah. which and, implements and the topology. And the VLAN and the connection. And, <laughs> yes, the VLAN, uh, the, uh, yes, and the... Um, but once we provision all those stuff to the user, then the user can change the topology. So you can experiment mm -hmm. with, a, with a ring topology first, and then mm -hmm. you can switch over to a spanning tree. There is no need for, for us, for the operators, to... to yes, but, to <coughs> yes, but uh, there are... They can do whatever they want at the open, the open flow controller. Yes, so, uh, but uh, there, uh, there are some cases with, for example, if a user has already uh, push a request for uh, one only one VLAN, and uh, for a reason uh, wants yeah, to create to create uh, yes. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. 
he has to repush another flow space request in order to take control. Mm -hmm. So, as I said, uh, we had our documentation under uh, the entry uh, task five uh, week page. I don't know if you have access uh, to this page, but Kate will arrange this <laughs> if you like. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's no problem. I, I think it should be the same if you have access to the internet, so it should also be a problem. Uh, no problem that you have access to the outside mode. That's not true. Yeah, that's not true. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 